welcome to the World 14.1 Tournament. We're here at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in New Brunswick, New Jersey. We're here to watch Mike Siegel take on defending champion Oliver Ortman. This is Inside Pool Video. I'm J.R. Calvert. Joining me here in the booth is Charlie Eames. Charlie, welcome. Thank you very much, J.R. How's your tournament experience going so far? Loving it. Loving it. Uh, got the best seat in the house. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've got people bringing me coffee. I, you know, I, <laughs> what, what more do you I can't need? Can't go I wrong get, with that. Get to hang out and run my mouth about pool the rest of the time. <laughs> you know? Bird, bird's eye view of some of the best matches going too. <laughs> well, this plans to be a, a pretty good match. Everybody's hyped up about this. Uh, I think, I'll, yeah, I think Oliver's only lost to Ray Martin, so which was a fantastic, fantastic match. That really was. Uh, you know, we're, I'm going to have to go back and look at the scoring in that, uh, especially when we go to uh, put it on pay-per-view, I guess, on uh, archived video. Uh, I believe that Oliver messed up this score. In what way? Uh, well, he had 86. Okay. We all watched him get 86. He made nine balls and should have had 95. Okay. When he moved away from the counter, it said 75. And we all swore that, you know, we were all, I mean, guys in the chat were. So do we think that Oliver actually won that match, or do we think that? Uh... <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that uh, he is you, 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 you we're going to have to go back and watch the video. You know what, though? Oliver is the type of player and the type of person that even if he did make that mistake, he'll take that on himself and he'll let that go because he really is an incredible gentleman and he really will let that go. If, if I know anything about Oliver, and I'd like to think that I do, is that uh, he's that type of competitor that he'll let that one kind of go and just keep, just move on and look look forward to the rest of the matches. All right, guys, we're about to get started. Mike Siegel taking a couple of last practice shots here at the World 14-1 Tournament. We would like to thank our sponsors, Olhausen Pool Tables, Andy Cloth, Kamui Tips, yay, Kamui, Predator Cues, Aramith Balls, Pool and Billiard Magazine, Amsterdam Billiards, and, of course, producing this incredible live stream, Inside Pool. Somebody in the chat is saying that uh, Oliver did not make a mistake on the score, but I'm not sure. I, w I, didn't, I wasn't paying that close of attention. I had a camera glued to my face. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to all go back and watch it. You know, we're not hyping it up. Uh, believe it or not, Dennis Walsh and I were both sitting here doing the score, and we thought that there was a mistake somewhere. Mm. Hey, you know what? Watched a lot of balls get made already. I could have made a mistake. There's a chance that I made a mistake. I, I refuse to believe that. I, 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 sorry, I just don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no way. After two Valley Forges working with you at the uh, Fury 14.1 Challenge, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. Now, do you have any uh, news that you can give us for the upcoming Yeah, one? Uh, with the new venue, it's getting very exciting. Um, we have a lot of uh, interesting new sponsors, a lot of queues. We're going to be full up with queues for raffles, and we're going to do something a little bit different this year where instead of doing it all at the end, we're going to have a couple of uh, queues to raffle off throughout the event. That way people who, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, well, I'm leaving tomorrow, you know, so they're going to have a chance to win. and. We're uh, looking into getting the nod from the ABP and Johnny Archer and his organization because we, we're doing this for the players. So it's getting exciting. And, of course, obviously, if we can work with Inside Pool Mag again, which for two years running produced a flawless, flawless live stream, that would be the icing on the cake. Uh, I think we, we'd be, it'd be a pleasure. It'd be our honor to come back and work uh, with you. Fantastic. Well, here we go. We're getting ready to start out this with the lag. Have any pr early predictions for us? I say that Oliver is going to win the leg by three centimeters, and um, I think Mike Siegel is going to cry. <laughs> no, I, I, I predict that this is going to be one of the tightest matches that you're going to see, but I think Oliver is going to come out on top. That's just a prediction. I could be wrong, obviously, which, again, stranger things have happened. Well, Oliver did win the leg. All right, I'm 50% I'm 50 so far. 50%. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mike's already talking. He's chatting. <laughs> Let's give these guys a seat. We're going to turn up the mic out on the uh, stream and let you guys hear more of the natural sound. <laughs> we might just hear some good chatter going on here. With the mic, Siegel, I have absolutely no doubt that you will. <laughs> yeah, I think we're I think we're going to be fine. All right, time to see Mike Siegel's opening break. JR, I think the scariest thing about this matchup is that at any point, either player could literally run out the match. And I, and I think that's got to be the scariest thing in this tournament right now. You know, and, and I agree with, with the hype that's going on right now. You know, Mike Siegel ran 183 balls. Uh, our friends over at DIPT uh, had informed everybody that uh, Dino Andrews, in, in particular, uh, had informed people that Mike ran 183 balls getting warming up for this event. That doesn't surprise me at all. When you have the kind of pedigree that Mike has coming into this event, he's he's a threat at any point. Get a good look at Mike sitting in his chair. Well, you know, Mike knows this game as good as anybody in the, in the tournament, if not better. Absolutely. And he's probably played more serious matches in this with straight pole than just about anybody else that's in this. Oh, uh, you're taught, you know, it's also a matter of pressure situations and finding your way out and holding your nerve. Oliver has been looking at these dead balls. Now, see the nine ball? Mm -hmm. He ha That's been his forte, is he's picking out these dead balls. And. The, the scary thing is, is that Mike might not shoot again. It's just like we're saying. He, he's been blasting these open and, get, you know, making a bunch of balls to get comfortable. And then he starts be, you know, he's that mechanic. He gets in there and he works the whole rack. This, if this nine ball goes, Mike not, Mike might not shoot. The, the funny thing is, it's, it's, that's not even a, it's, for somebody to even question that, it's, it's scary because, the scary thing about Oliver Whitman is that he is, an, it sounds like a really cheesy thing to say, but he's such a whole package player. He can switch gears and go from straight power to all finesse. He's a surgeon in the rack. You know, unfortunately, he missed that shot. He might have played that a little aggressively to try and make a statement, I think, with Mike and try and keep him in his chair early on. He might have tried to force that. I don't know. Well, he had some strange little errors against Ray Martin also, you know, not counting the scoring question that got brought up earlier. But he had a couple of little unforced, you know, hiccups in the Ray Martin match as well. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, and the funny thing is now that the same thing can be said about Mike Siegel, that right now Oliver Rortman could literally sit in his chair for the rest of the match. Exactly right. Yeah, that, that could have been an all or nothing. Yeah. I just... Go ahead. I think he's got the 14 ball here, which is going to be the key to, to getting started for this whole thing because he needs to, everybody needs to kind of get their blood flowing and settle in and make some balls. And the fact that he had a wide open shot to get started, you know. Yeah, that's that's a huge, that's a huge confidence builder. If you can take that first rack, even though it's only 14 out of 100, if you can take that first rack and fire that first ball in with power and authority, it's definitely sending a statement. I mean, you're not going to intimidate Oliver Ortman. It's right. not going to happen. But if you can pull that, you are going to give yourself that kind of confidence. I remember watching a match with Mike Siegel, and he walked up his first shot of the match. I think it was the 2000 U.S. Open 14.1, actually, back at the Roosevelt Hotel. He had a nine-foot cut shot that he hammered in like it had eyes, and his opponent sat for the rest of the match because he was so shaken. He went up to the next shot, started shaking his wrist. That was that. Amazing. Yeah. Gonna see Mike do some surgical work in the side of the stack right now. Well, I think he's gonna try and leave at 15, and he'll start taking some of the then you know the six, maybe yeah, the four he, ball. He, I think he's gonna look to clear the eight out of here because he's gonna need to clear that lane at some point. And truthfully, that ball's kind of just laying down there, st just stranded. Sometimes you want to leave it down there in case something funky happens. You know. My biggest problem is that I always leave balls all the way up table. <laughs> Three balls later, I'm sitting there going, oh, I forgot that was up there. 
That transition ball sometimes is just so hard to get around. We might even actually, it's it's good that you mentioned that, we may actually end up seeing something like an 8, 10, 15 final end pattern there. You might leave those balls, and Mike is such a textbook player that it's entirely possible. You might see a very, very, very triangular, or square, as my fiancé would say, trapezoid type pattern. <laughs> Well, it's nice to see Mike playing again. I remember the the hiatus years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, something where, where you know that there's this guy out there who's, you know, a monster. And, you know, just so brutally talented. And, you know, the rest of us are playing this game and he's going, why would I play this game? You know? Yeah, he, uh, he's a champion. There's really, that's it. He is an absolute champion. And we're hoping next year, actually, to have him be a part of our event and, you know, bring that draw. Because he does draw a crowd. People absolutely love Mike. They really do. And the funny thing is, he's a great guy to talk to. Yeah, he is. He really is. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's yeah. the best player alive, and he'll be more than happy to tell you that. But he's the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> yeah, he is a good guy. I think I've known Mike, oh, man, 25 years. Wow. Maybe longer. On a side note, John Schmidt just got the tournament high run with a 92 and out against Mr. Blacklaw from Germany, one of his first U.S. tournament appearances, actually. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of playing Mr. Blacklaw last night. Very methodical, very measured player, very in the same vein as Thorsten and Oliver. Yeah. Had that same European composure about him, very calm, seemed to vibrate at a lower frequency than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And as we see now, there's your eight ball coming into play, JR. There it is. Go figure. What are you doing back here? Go out there and show them show them how it's done. I don't know about that. <laughs> they don't want me to show them how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said that to me one time. They're like, go show them how it's done. I said, how is that? They said, poorly. <laughs> it's done really awfully. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Let me show you a new definition to embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> I invent ways to miss break shots. Just start playing 12 and 3. You know, they call it 14.1. <laughs> I play like 11 and 4 and just hope for the best. <laughs> just a quick thing, guys. I am not an employee of Inside Pool Mag, but look at the quality of this stream, though. It's fantastic. As, and last year, actually, Alvin and I were joking around during the uh, Valley Forge stream, full HD. Not half, not three-quarter, full HD. We're having a lot of fun with this. Oh, I'm sure. A lot of fun. Well, Mike, uh, I think he made two balls on the break there. He made the, the scheduled ball, the appointed ball, and then made another one. Yeah, the balls right now are sliding really, really nicely out of the stack. That Andy cloth, very smooth cloth. It plays absolutely fantastic, especially on these tables. Uh, where I work at Q9 in Levittown, New York, we have our feature table, actually, is an all-housing champion table like this one, and it's the best table in the house. It really is, and truthfully, you know, I, I know there are a lot of other great tables out there, but for my money right now, all-housing is definitely up there. Nice tables. Real mm. nice table. Steve Isbister, you now owe me a table for the pl shameless, shameless plug. <laughs> 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 now, Steve, actually, Olhausen was one of our sponsors at a charity event that we ran at Q9 for a local animal shelter. They gave away an eight-foot uh, kiss of death table. Did they? Yeah, we raised three thousand dollars just from that table alone. It was amazing. That's that's awesome. Yeah, a bunch of needy animals got to, you know, have something to eat and some nice warm blankets and stuff like that. Have you ever been down to their plant? Uh, no, actually. That's uh, that's coming up next. I did the plant tour years back, right after they had moved from California, and Irvine. And uh, they just, it's a great plant. Really, it's something to behold. Well, what do you see here? Do you think he's going to save at 11? I think he's going to save the 11. I think we might see him... You know, he might play, I think it's the 14 down in the bottom. 
But he's going to have to do something with that 9-10. You might look to see him drift up right now and play a two rails. JR is actually pointing it out to me. We, we're supposed to have one of those little pen things that we can draw on the, uh, you know, the screens. But I'm sorry, guys. You know, <laughs> inside pool. <laughs> I, I'm uh, designing one as we speak. <laughs> He really is. He's got Photoshop open as the stream is going. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to do something. He might try and nudge this 10 right past the 11 ball. Or he can draw off it. it you know, I, I think he's hit enough of it that it's going to hit the bottom of the 11. Yeah. And then become the new break ball. It's entirely possible that it'll kind of get left into position. Yeah. What he Even if he hits the 11 square, he lock, knocks the 11 out into a better place. Mm-hmm just the idea of getting up for the five down in the corner pocket. Okay. So he did miss it. That was pretty tough to do. Yeah. He's going to have to worry about this 6-10, though, at some point. He's going to want to try and clear this out as soon as possible. He's not happy. He just realizes that he's got one problem. He's got three balls to solve that problem. <laughs> And there's no say that he's not going to create another one while he's doing it. That's the issue. That is the issue at hand. And it's funny, too, because the longer you leave it, the harder and harder it becomes to get rid of those two balls that are sitting there. Always the case. Yeah, I uh, was doing some commentary with Sean Wilkie last match. And I went down through my little, you know, how I dissect a rack. And I, you know, first identify the problems. Mm-hmm. Second, get to them as soon as possible because you want to solve problems with all the balls on the table, not your last two or three. And that's why Mike's a little upset. He's not upset about the problem. He's upset that it becomes infinitely harder with less balls. Oh, absolutely. And with his experience, he's going to know that better than anybody, and he's going to do everything he can to try and clear this out as soon as possible. My biggest problem, as I said, is I, I, I tend to leave pro trouble spots a little too long thinking that I'll get to them and find a better way to break them open and one of the biggest things you had mentioned Steve Kurtz earlier that he's kind of teaching me and training me with is uh, how to break those little little spots up and how to just drift and nudge and all the subtle nuances that every player here seems to be able to do just each player is better than the next the big thing right now is he has to decide whether he's shooting the combo and if he is, where he's going to be and where he's going to shoot the six. Yeah. And what he uses is a contingency plan. In other words, he should have another ball besides his break ball as his insurance ball. Absolutely. So he has to get on it from this first ball here. I think we might look to see him... Do you think he's going to play the five up and down table and try and hit him, or do you think he's going to go for the combination right here? He's well, looking at it. He might be able to see that ball directly. I, don't, I, I think he can actually see the ten ball outright, and they'll be able to play the, you know, three rails, come at the five, maybe even try and get to the six first. He's hitting it. He's going to make the ten. It's a great shot to recover. So you got <laughs> Mike's chattering them. That's one of the great things about watching Mike, though. You know, pool, everyone's always complaining about the state of pool and pool's in a decline and this and that. But I'll tell you right now, when you have players like Mike, it makes it so much more interesting because they add that human and emotional element to the game. You know, I'm not saying that players like Mika, the Iceman, and Oliver, the Machine, Ortman, aren't amazing players because they truly, truly are. They are champions by any definition. But when you have players like Mike Siegel, like John Schmidt, who are a little more colorful, who are going to be kind of characters while maintaining that same level of play, it just adds so much more for fans and for that media coverage. And it's absolutely fantastic to watch these guys play. It really is. Mike's went too far, and now he knows he's going to be on the other side of the break ball. Mm -hmm. He's not happy. 
That's one of those things, though, about this brand-new Andy Clough is that it is smooth as silk, and the ball is going to keep running. You have to take that into consideration. Well, I think he has to go up and down here. Uh, no, no two ways about it. He's got to hit this ball, follow it with high left, or he has to draw it with inside and swing around the ball and then come across the line. I think following this ball up and down is going to be his best bet. I agree. He I don't know why I agree, but I agree. It sounded really, really, in, like, very knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> it's the inflection. Exactly. It's, it's all in how you articulate. And then he will use a banana. <laughs> nah, I don't think I'll sell that one, but I will say this. Uh, he's he's upset because I'm probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I concur. I'm just saying I could be right on this. And we finally have movement from Oliver in his chair. Getting ready to possibly be at the table. Let's see the offering. I've had the, I've had the chance to practice with Oliver Wortman. And let me tell you, when you're staring down a nine-foot cut shot and he's staring back at you, it's a little scary. Him and those scary m mechanical robot German eyes. I'll tell you what, Oliver's a heck of a guy. He's oh, extremely a nice guy. Okay, here's your up and down. Did he get on the right side of it? It sure looks like he did. He's gonna have to pop this somehow, though. This he's gonna have to watch the scratch in the bottom corner pocket too. I think if he drifts too much. Although the angle that he's coming in at, he might be a little high. I think he's gonna be hitting. He's gonna definitely be dealing with the uh, top ball. It's just how much and where, and we'll figure that out here in a second. I think he's gonna be able to hit dead center ball and he's going to hit that top ball full yeah. and he'll slide off to the side. See it? He's going to hit just barely above the top center of the top yeah. ball with a dead center hit. Looks like he's going to try and draw off this a little bit though. Maybe try and make sure that he gets out of that stack. Just a hair. Yeah, he doesn't want to get stuck in that stack at all. He hits more of the, the top side of the ball and that's when your cue ball shoots up to the end yeah. rail. Right? So, yeah. Let's, let's see him take his time and bury this. I know that he wants to be 42, you know. He might even give us a little speech here. Yeah. <laughs> the, Mike, the Mike Siegel he's, diatribe. He, he's, he's actually contacting Oliver to see if we can cl clean the ball. There's something on the ball that's bothering him. And Oliver is actually pretty good at this. Watch Oliver's technique. He moves the, the chalk in. And he moves the line right to the center of the ball. Oliver oh. is a very conscientious opponent. Didn't even call the referee over, cleaning his opponent's cue ball for him. See how he does that? Yeah, I like that. Very good. That might be a ploy by Mike to see if Oliver can place it with the right angle, maybe a little, you know, a, a, an eighth inch, quarter inch, maybe more angle. There's a great story, actually, from Hurricane Irene that Tony Robles was playing straight pool at Amsterdam, and oh, excuse me, during the earthquake that just hit. And uh, he was on 99, didn't have a shot. All of a sudden, the earthquake hit. He went back to the table, and he had a shot for 100. Oh, he He's missed it. watch that side pocket. He missed it. <laughs> so he had a shot after the hurricane, or after the He earthquake. didn't have a shot, and then all of a sudden, after the earthquake, he had a shot for the 100, so. Love it. That reminds me of a time when I got corner hooked behind the side pocket, and there was a dance class upstairs. <laughs> And uh, I, I was playing the guy, and I knew that it was his last barrel, and this was the last game. And I nonchalanted the ball, and it rolled across and got behind the point. And I couldn't see the nine, and I couldn't see the nine, but it was real close to the side pocket. Mm -hmm. I could just see the edge of it, right? I, I just couldn't see the part where I could make it. And I, of course, stop, start walking around. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how am I going to get to do this. All of a sudden, I hear this clack 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 on the roof or on the ceiling and i hear and slowly but surely the the cue ball started bouncing against the the rail <laughs> and it rolled out and gave me the shot after about 20 seconds and i hurried up and <laughs> <laughs> that's great your opponent's sitting outside waiting for the little 13 year old ballerinas to come out yell at him what are you doing you just cost me 200 dollars <laughs> <laughs> JR gets hooked again in the next rack yet. He starts sending up requests. 
<laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's fantastic. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Mike has but to make this ball, and I think he's going to have a pretty darn makeable shot on the 13. He split the wicket on that one. Yeah, Mike is uh oh, that he's, be 11. Mike is definitely tricky in terms of getting out of those little tricky situations. He he always seems to come up with a solution. Well, look what he's doing right now. He's making sure that balls have pockets. I'm going to clear the 5 out and he may get position on this 15. Let's see what he's doing. He's going right over for that 11. He's taking a look at that, that 4 right now as well. Yeah, I, I like, truthfully right here, I, I kind of like that 4 ball. I'm probably wrong, but I, I personally like that 4 ball. I would have liked to have cleaned that up. But, yeah, he's going to look to play that probably right now and try and clear out that 1, 2, 8 little trouble spot. He's going to leave the 13 as a breaker. Now, he's going to move the 2, and it's going to carry him off the 1, so... He's going to have a shot on the nine ball after this. There you go. Oh, he's got a great layout here. Yeah. I think you're going to see the 15 or the 6 being used as your key ball. It's nice to watch a master out. at work. Maybe. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the ways I was taught how to play straight pool was to watch these matches, actually. And now that the inside pool stream is such high quality, you, you can watch these matches and, and you can see pores on Mike Siegel's face right now. You can see those whiskers come out of his nose, but all, jo oh, come on. <laughs> all, all, all joking aside, though, because the stream is such high quality now, you really can get a feel for what these guys are doing and how they're going to play out these racks, and you can pause and guess for yourself as to what they're going to do and adjust what your strategy is according to how they play. Yeah, I think the quality of the stream has, has really gone up uh, in the last year. We've been doing everything we can. Yeah. If I knew anything about jewelry, I might be able to appraise that <laughs> ring on Mike's finger. It's that good. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, don't. Just kidding. Listen, do not get me started on rings. I, I just got engaged last month to my beautiful fiance, Lizzie. And yes, that's a shameless plug for my fiance right there. She's not actually selling anything. We're just plugging her. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we just got engaged last, uh, two Thursdays ago, about a, a month ago now. And, uh. She lets me come out to these events every once in a while, which is great. So I figure before we're married, I'll get my fill. Well, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Yeah, one, like I said, the 15, very textbook end pattern right there by Mike Captain Hook Siegel. I, I actually believe that he's just a hair short of where he wanted to be. Yeah, because he's be actually going to drift a little farther. Yeah, he, he's not going to get that angle that he, that he wanted on that shot. Well, not so bad, though. Taking a 42-ball run into this with a nice shot. It is not a bad break shot, I might add. He's out talking to the fans. Well, you know what? This is playing against the likes of Oliver Ortman. It's going to be a big win in his cap, especially for this event, because you know Oliver wanted to repeat after last year. You know, he had such an amazing run the year before, actually. He won where he was running hundreds and out, and 150 and out, and he was everyone's pick. He looked absolutely unstoppable. We're going to see Mike Siegel play a break shot here. I think he's going to try and draw out of this stack. Once again, of course, master, master live stream, technician, engineer, Alvin, walking around right now making sure everything is amazing as always. And if I remember correctly, the grandfather of live streaming in HD, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Absolutely one of the best streams going right now. I speak from experience from Valley Forge, the Super Billiards Expo where Alvin got to listen to Steve and my ridiculous commentary last year on no, anything and everything. Good. I 
we just had a notification from John Lehman that we're going to have a referee take care of the match calls. His name is Carl Kantrowitz. And we're going to get the calls like the old days when uh, Siegel and Martin match up. Just a kind of blast from the past. He'll be out there saying, 14 ball side pocket for the folks. I have I happen to like that, truthfully. I, I'll tell you right now, also speaking of that, Mr. Peter Burroughs, the tournament director for the Maryland 14.1 Challenge, is by far the best dressed player in this event. He it, came down last night wearing a full tuxedo, and truthfully, I absolutely loved it. It's a hearkening back to the days when 14.1 was a gentleman's game. It still is. I'm not saying it's not by any means. I am a 14.1 purist, but I will tell you right now, yes, it is very uncomfortable playing in a bow tie, and I have done it, but in truth, it really, it just gives such a, an air of class and, and that championship nature to the game. Sure. I mean, you always look better in a tuxedo. Maybe you do. I don't. Uh, not really. So is he going to get the four six here and get yeah, this problem? I think he's going to yeah he's going to want to get rid of this right now. You don't want to take any chances. Just makes you want to you know get a martini shaken not stirred. <laughs> oh, he caught that five ball bad. He did not want to catch that five. No, he actually he really didn't want to do that because he ended up look if you look at all the way up table. Is he, looking, is he going to try and look at the four ball for this shot right now? I think he might actually try and cut the five, if anything. I think that's going to be his shot. Five ball. That's going to be his ball. <laughs> I actually heard that Mike Siegel is going to start producing his own podcast. All Mike Siegel, all the time. That's possible. Very possible. And basically his best of hits are just going to be a CD of him complaining about racks of straight pool. <laughs> this, of course, is going to coincide with the Mika Eminent Christmas album. They might get one of our Alvin Nelson bubblehead dolls thrown in. <laughs> I was wondering if he's going to catch that two square. He's still got to deal with this eight ball, though. He Actually, he m I think he's going to probably end up using the eight e as a key ball. It's entirely possible to play what looks to be the 15. Well, I think he's going to, you know, have to think about shooting the seven right now, then the four, and then the deuce. He'll come around. Well, not the deuce, but I'd, I'd pretty much leave the deuce yeah. to the side. I'd yeah. take that 14. I think you're going to look to see, oh, he's playing. See, he might play that in reverse. He might play this ball right now. It looks to be the 11 ball. All kinds of room. Yeah. Right? All kinds of room. Might play the 14, 5, 7, 2. Leave the 8 ball as the key ball. See, the fun, the reason why I like the 8 ball as a key ball is because it gives him two different options. He can either draw off one rail and play the 14 as a, uh, excuse me, play the 15 as a standard break ball. Or he can, if he gets a little hinky on it, he can always just roll up a little bit and play that fo the uh, 15 ball on the side and use a side pocket break shot. Okay. He does have the deuce now. I think he's going to need to go down between the 7 9. I like that line a little bit better instead of trying to get between the 9 8. He's looking at the 9 8 line. But I think it's more of a natural to go between the 7-9 line to get to this 4. I agree. Did he fall short? It looks like he, he fell, fell short. Little, yeah, he fell a little short. You can he, see she, You can see him shaking his head. He is not happy right now. Can you believe this? He may end up having to shoot either a bank shot or the 7 ball. I know he doesn't want to shoot the nine past the five. Well, the question if he does that is he still has to find a way to clear out that eight and leave himself in a 
good enough position where he can continue the run because right now at 42, I and mean, right now he's at 53 points in total. He's not. He's really not going to want to give that up. I think right now you're going to see him try and play with follow seven in the side pocket. He's going to go one rail and come back out for the eight nine uh, eight fifteen. And I, I'll let you know this. He's going to have to hit this with a little pace. A little pace and a little spin too, which is going to throw that ball a little bit as well. No, no, no. He doesn't want it that far. No. But this is one of those situations, like I said, you might just see him roll up and play the 15 in the side for the break shot. Yeah, that, that's what I think he's going to have to do now. Every once in a while, I kind of know what I'm talking about. I have shining moments of brilliance and then ridiculously overwhelming instances of stupidity. So how I got sucked into doing commentary, I'll never know. <laughs> you would think that JR learned his lesson after last year, but no. Yeah, Alvin and I have tried to give each other the nickname Nerd Stradamus. <laughs> That's great. Unfortunately, right now I'm winning it, so <laughs> it's not so great. I like it. I like it. I I would I would take that nickname. That's a great nickname. See, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm very surprised he chose that path. I, I, this is one of those rare instances where I'm going to say that I disagree with that path. I, I'm prepared to learn. <laughs> I, you know. Um, you know what? I, I understand why he took that path because it's going to give him such a severe angle that it, you know, he's going to try and eliminate the scratch when you're going into the stack like that, and it gives him a. Gr if he hits this with pace, I mean, the stack is going to open up, but I, I think the simpler outcome would have been to play the 15 in the side. But, you know, my high run is 12, so it shows what I know. <laughs> and it took me three attempts, so I doctored some video just to splice it together. Well, I, I think I've, I've only ran more than my age a couple of times in my life. All right. 24, very nice. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, 26, excuse me. Let's prepare to be dazzled, folks. I think that he's going to hit this ball with follow. He's got the, enough of an angle towards the rack that even if it comes off a little funny, he's going to end up going straight up and down table. No if, English, uh, just follow. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see him baby this shot either. I think he's going to truthfully go, as they say, balls to the wall here, and, and he's going to want to hit it. Hmm. What a great shot, and he got the five ball. And look at that. That's a Mike Siegel dance. He's got the three ball. shooting at this five ball right now, or this four ball, I mean. Not yeah, Mike, bad. Mike really is a very colorful player. All right, guys, I'm going to be stepping out one second, if you'll excuse me. I leave you in the very capable hands of Mr. J.R. Calvin. What he's wanting to do right now is take care of that 13-14. That's his only problem. So probably make the 9 very softly here. There you go. Break ball. He should be looking at the 6 ball. But let's see if he can go out towards the 8. Straight at it. 
perfect. Now he should be able to manage these balls. He actually has the ability on this shot to make the 7 and come off the rail into the 13 and use the 13 to stop for the 14. So what he's looking at right now is whether he can kill it against the side. I, with the 8 ball there, I think he has the ability to, to work his way out of this mess. It's not a hard conundrum, but he wants to make sure he does it right. And I like if he comes underneath it as well. Some friends, Dennis Walsh just dropping by. Letting us know that he'll be available. Charles is going to come back. Welcome back, Charles. Thank you very much. Mike is making pretty easy work of this rack. He's the only problem he's setting on it right now, and he looks pretty, pretty much in a good position. Um, just a quick side note. As far as I know, Pomeropoulos is not at the venue as of yet. I have spoken with John Schmidt. He is not on the premises, and I've been told that if he does set foot on the premises, he will be arrested immediately for stealing many, many hours of people watching his video footage. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> it's been a long week, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> the hurricane has beat you down, hasn't it? Oh, actually, no. I, I kind of snuck away. My girlfriend, li my, my, ooh, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. My fiancé lives in Forest Hills, Queens, where they did not lose power. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Just swing this up one rail. Yep. Just got to be careful of the side pocket, obviously, which he did. Play this with a little bit of follow to give a little angle. I mean, if he moves ahead two or three inches, he's probably perfect. Absolutely. We may see a perfect hundred and out here. It's entirely possible. It is entirely possible. Right now, I believe Mike is closing in on a 70, which I'm sure he's already got. He so just needs two racks and two balls to get his 100. So, JR, who is your prediction to win the entire event this year? Well, I was going to say you, but... Uh, well, they had actually asked me um, to, to not play my next couple of rounds to give everyone else a chance, which I understand. You know, that's that's rather sportsmanlike of you. It's the least I can do. Out of You know, I mean, you, you figure, you know, with Ray Martin competing, you know, I, I tried to knock him over a few times and, you know, kick him, but they wouldn't let me, so I understand. <laughs> He's only a <laughs> Hall of Famer. It's cool. <laughs> no, the, ni the funny thing is, the nice thing is about Ray, about Ray Martin playing this year is that he has such a massive fan following here. He has drawn a very large crowd during all of his matches. His family is here watching, and I think that the overall feeling of elation having Ray Martin playing in this event is absolutely incredible. And what better way to do it justice than to immortalize it on the inside pool mag stream? <laughs> well, that... Uh Match between him and look at that. Look at him rooting that ball. Wow. He really wants this 100 ball run, doesn't he? Absolutely. He really wants it. It's nice to see the fire back in him. Mike is an absolute perfectionist when it comes to playing this game, and he, he wants to, to have that 100 every rack, but every match. But I'll tell you right now, going up against Oliver, he does not want to mess around. He wants this match over with. You know, even though you know everyone jokes around about Mike's ego and and how you know, 
Uh-oh. Oh, he's ooh, all ooh, right. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Wasn't even close. <laughs> Come on, Mike. <laughs> he's talking to the crowd. <laughs> look at the look on Oliver's face, too. That's just great. Oliver is just pleased right now. He's he's in his happy place. <laughs> Oliver is thinking about getting back to Germany right now and getting away from Mike Siegel as soon as possible. There should be a little bubble. He thinks his hurricane stink. <laughs> we don't get to a, a small a small um, a small gust from Hurricane Irene kept that cue ball up. Ah, in the crowd, you can see Dr. Michael Fedak sitting next to Eddie Culhane from New Jersey. I had the chance to speak with Dr. Fedak, a very, very nice gentleman. Also, if Mike does run the 100 here, that will be the tournament high run. Currently held by John Schmidt with a 92 and out against Mr. Blacklaw. I really don't know his first name, that's why I keep calling him Mr. I figure it's better than Johan or Sven. <laughs> or that guy. Hey, you. This is a, it looks like a tough rack. He's going to have to work to get out of this. This is not an easy rack, I don't think, for him. He's got one or two little trouble spots, but he should be fine, though. That 615 is nobody's uh, picnic. He needs to get... Around on that 15, right where he's just looking. He sees that there's places in behind there. He could do it here. Yeah. Because the 15 does go by the 7. And he knows that if he goes too far, he's got the 2-5 option to start clearing some of that problem. So I, I, I see him doing it right here. Yeah, he fell a little short. But the nice thing is he has that 7 for insurance, though. He's going to have to find a way to get back and play for it. He can play the 15 ball right here, though. He fell a little shorter than I think he wanted to, but he definitely has a chance to play the 15 here. Seven and then nine up in the corner is an option where he moves the cue ball into the six afterwards. That way he has a shot on the, on the 15, and then the six is his break ball. Let's see if he wants to try that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want Mike to do it JR's way, press 5 now. If you want him to do it my way, plus press 6. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to have a lot of fan interaction here. <laughs> Wait till they do that on YouTube and finds out that it changes the color of their screen. <laughs> That's the old Andy Kaufman gag. Uh, look at this. Look, look, look. He does not like that. I don't blame him. This is not uh, not optimal. Ah, oh, nice. He did get it to go around. He's going to have to look to play the 2-4 up there at some point soon, be, unless he's going to leave one of them as a key ball. He's yeah, up he's, there right yeah, now. Yeah, he's up there right now. And he hit it perfectly. Roll forward. Slide off the 4. And you're right at the 9. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Williams just poked his head in. Saw JR and myself doing commentary, shook his head, and walked away. Very slowly. <laughs> Because he likes us so much. Well, you know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Nothing better than, a, you know, an attaboy from, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you what. they uh, Dragon is a massive force in professional pool, and I'll tell you right now, it's uh, I think it's a fantastic event as a whole, and not because I'm sitting here doing commentary either. It's the probably the highlight of my pool year. And that's coming from somebody who runs his own event, so, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, I spoke to, you know, he's he's in the chat stream right now, Steve Kurtz, about this event, and he really wanted to be here, and fortunately the hurricane knocked it out for him. He, he didn't get the chance to come. 
and I know he's been practicing with a vengeance for next year, so this is actually the highlight of our uh, our pool year. With this ball here, Mike will be on an 84 ball run. Let's see what kind of position he gets on this. Two rails around. He's perfect. Uh, he just falls great. He is perfect on an 84 ball run. This would just be perfect icing on the cake for Oliver. Besides a detour, four and a half hour drive from Washington. Drives around New Brunswick for an hour because all the roads were shut down. That happened to me yesterday. I it's drove here for five and a half hours yesterday from New York. It was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It w I, it, we came in the other day, and uh, you should have saw the look on our face when, you know, we just kept running into streets that were shut off. Yeah. Massive flooding and trees down. A little bit of low left. Okay. Center left will leave you there. Now, he has a rail first on the 5 if he doesn't like that 11 or the 7. You might actually see him play that 5. Yeah, I think I think you're right because he's going to use that to go up table. The spin that he's going to put on this ball coming off that rail is going to put him a little bit up table. He can clear out. I think it's the looks to be the 15 ball. He can clear out the 15-7 now and get rid of those trouble spots, but he may elect to leave them. Yeah, he, I, he's he's going to play this 15 ball right now. You do not want to leave those balls up there. You really don't. There are many things in this life that I do not know, but balls of table is one thing I do know not to leave. It only took you 600 tries to figure that out, right? 714, actually. It's a nice number. Well, it's big, round. Babe Ruthian number. <laughs> Uh-uh. He needs that ball to get that four ball. Look at this. And you need a little luck like this every now yeah. and then where you get your option. Well, the nice thing about the way these guys play is that they see all the angles and they really do manage to find a way and to get themselves out of trouble. And no matter what happens here, he has that two ball that he can play. He has the 13-4. You know, and these guys just, these high ball runners, guys like Siegel, Orpin, Schmidt, Thomas Engert, Niels Fyen, these guys that run these massive, massive numbers... They, they just always seem to have a ball peeking out somewhere that they know is there. It's it's not a mistake. They they know their angles. They're leaving themselves these angles on purpose. You know, it's it's not a, an accident that they're falling into some of these amazing positions that they are. We'll see the 8, 9, and, of course, the 15, 10, 3, 6. He needs to figure those out immediately. Now, the 8, 9 doesn't look like it's wired. Yeah, I think he just figured that out for himself, as a matter of fact. Now, the 15 might go up in the side pocket past while in between the 10, 11, 3. He may be able to get on top of this and shoot the 15 down on the corner as well. I think he's going up for the 7 right now, though. But that's a technique in straight pull that a lot of people don't realize is that you use those side pockets and upper pockets because it, you clear one ball and the puzzle falls apart and right now I think the puzzle that needs to be solved is that 15 ball needs to be gone if he can get back in on this and shoot it in the lower right hand corner he's shaking his head Mike is famous for this, everybody, shaking his head and then coming up with a miraculous shot that's going to leave him smelling like a rose. He may elect to come right up into these balls or just play position for the 15 in the side. Okay. See, truthfully, looking at that, I really thought that he might have tried and gone underneath the stack, but it's one of the things that I'm actually trying to to stay away from is breaking open those little trouble spots and not leaving myself with anything. I notice when you're coming in from behind like that, a la Phil Bolomo, you tend to get a, in a little bit of trouble like that. What a great shot right there. Well, it was a great shot because he finally got a ball out of that, you know, last six balls to go outside the rack area. 
those problem balls were in the rack area and he was having a heck of a time getting to them. And the big problem that he had, well, he just moved another ball. He nestled it. It's not the greatest break shot, but it will work. And now he's, he's perfect in line to take the three in the side or the ten, then the six. Now he's right at the moment at a 95 ball run. Well, I consider myself very grateful that I got the chance to do commentary with you, JR. I'm watching an incredible match thus far. Mm -hmm possibility of yet another Mike Siegel 100 could be a uh, omen of things to come for this event oh yeah if I'm not mistaken he is undefeated coming into this match correct I believe so yeah, yeah. believe so yeah, very foreboding he needs to really work this out now the angle that I like is that he goes below the line to the six to the hole and he comes across one rail and lays against the side rail because it's easy to tell the distance of the speed of the side rail. You know, to come across mm -hmm. there and know where that rail speed well, is. Well, he, he definitely, uh, I think he listened because he's about to shoot the six, come one rail. And I think he's going to leave himself a very nice angle. And it's going to be yep. beautiful. 98 balls we are. 98 two away from the hundred so for everybody keeping score at home he makes this ball gets a shot I think Oliver Wortman is going to step up out of his chair and just shake his hand yeah I agree and you know Oliver looks he looks rather you know uh, forbidding while he's in his chair nice guy it's funny because uh I was actually telling my fiance that it's it's a running joke throughout the tournament that every time he walks into a room, the room goes silent because he he really is a very foreboding character. Uh oh, uh -oh. does he? Oh, he got the kiss. Look at this. <laughs> and the eleven ball goes into play for the hundred. Uh, like I said, it pretty much. And will be. Oliver is unscrewing his key right now. No, oh, no, he's just holding on to it. I thought he was going to concede. Uh, Mike, shoot it right-handed for us. Come on. Shoot it one-handed. Come on, Mike. Come on, you know you want to shoot it right-handed, Mike. Although I'm really not going to lie, I hate to say, you kind of want to see him miss just to see Oliver get up and run it back on him, just to see. Or to foul the uh, ball. <laughs> Come on, don't do it behind the back. Right now he's saying, you sure you don't want to give this to me? <laughs> I'll tell you, he got very lucky that he got the 11 ball in that, pl in that uh, position anyway, so he should be considering himself very lucky. He's calling for double bridges. I am told that the limit you are allowed to use is two. The BCA handbook is sitting behind the tournament desk right now. We saw Ray Martin do this a little bit earlier with Oliver Ortman. And if I ever have the chance to play Oliver Ortman, I'm going to use two bridges. On Maybe. the break. <laughs> no, just every <laughs> single shot. Just, just psych him out on every single shot. Well, one what? thing that most people don't realize is Mike is right-handed. This, you know, he should be able to. I'm surprised over. that he didn't sh just kind of knock it in. You know, the locking bridgehead. Four ball 100. I don't even think he's within a six inch cap. Nine. It is. And there it is. Wow. Tremendous. Uh, great, great display. I mean, this is going to be on the records for a while. I think people are going to enjoy this for years to come. Absolutely. Even though it comes as no surprise that Mike Siegel runs 100 out against Oliver Ortman, still an incredible accomplishment when you have that level of pressure just getting out of the round robin into that final 32. JR, thank you for having me very much in the booth. I do have a match at this point. Absolute pleasure as always. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate you having you, and good luck in your next round. Thank you very much. Folks, thanks for tuning in. This was has been an Inside Pool video production of Mike Siegel versus Oliver Ortman at the World 14.1 Tournament here in 
the Hyatt Regency in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Folks, stay tuned. We have another round coming back at you in about, I'd say, a half hour. But we'll let the stream run in and let, let you watch the players warm up. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>